Welcome once again to another episode of SLMA Radio. Brought to you on behalf of the thousands and thousands of members of the Sales Lead Management Association. If it has to do with sales lead management or sales lead marketing, it probably starts here with the SLMA Radio Show. As always, we're privileged to have with us the founder, executive director, chief cook and bottle wash of the SLMA, the one and only, the irrepressible, the the man with all the connections in the industry here. This is Jim Obermeyer. Hey, Jim. Thank you, Paul Roberts. Paul is our producer for SLMA Radio, CRM Radio, and our other associated programs on the Funnel Radio Network. Our subject today is how to track mysterious, anonymous website traffic within your CRM system. Now, we all agree that it's lovely to have website traffic, but almost useless unless you know who the visitors are. (laughs) Victims, isn't that nice? Uh, The key element is to combine your web analytics and CRM data to turn anonymous visitors into real people. Today, we have John Cheney, CEO of Workbooks CRM, and he tackles how he has solved the mystery of the mysterious visitors. Uh, in March, Workbooks launched website, website, websites. It's websites, correct, John? Web Insights. Web, Web Insights. In- Web Insights. And which is a product enhancement to your marketing automation suite and Workbooks CRM. Because of this, we set up this interview to talk about the value of identifying website visitors. Now, first, some people say that 50 to 70% of the buying process is complete before the buyer makes contact with the vendor. Forty percent of businesses are waiting longer to engage visitors uh, and vendors. Another industry stats uh, out there says that gets thrown around a lot. Says that only two or three percent of the typical websites visitors identify themselves. So we're going to find out how true this all is. Okay, so we know there is a need now. How does the need get fulfilled so that the companies that use an anonymous tracking system can benefit from it? Our guest today, John Cheney, Chief Executive Officer and Founder of Workbooks, is a leading provider of CRM technology. As an entrepreneur, Mr. Cheney's previously launched two businesses in 2002, Black Spider Technologies, a worldwide provider of demand and on-demand and email web security that he successfully sold to Surf Control in 2006, and I was a consultant for Surf Control for a while. For $40 million, and uh, another one, another company is uh, Activists, an award-winning managed security services company, which was acquired by Articon Integrals in 1999. Mr. Jenny brings over 20 years of experience in senior management within the IT industry. John, tell us a little bit about Workbooks before we get into this subject. Hi, Jim, and thanks. Um, so here at Workbooks, we, we specialize in providing CRM, marketing automation, and business applications into what we describe as the mid-market. So our, our customer base are typically looking to grow their revenues and use our technology to underpin their revenue growth strategies and, and reduce operational costs by streamlining business processes. And our cl- cloud-based CRM platforms really deliver that for, for the mid-market customer base. So that's what we do. Okay. And I know you... Uh, in the light of full disclosure, you've been a supporter for the SLMA for four or five years, I believe. And we have. we've had you on the radio program before. You've contributed content. Uh, your marketing people have been great to work with in the U.K. And you've provided nice content for our visitors and for our members. Now, some, some, some specifics here. Uh, through Web Insights, what do you mean by being able to track uh, the people coming to the site and uh, there are various forms of website tracking out there. Right? For the last five or six years, there have been companies that provide some of these services. Uh, tell us about your service and how you've integrated this as part of your suite of services. Sure. So, as you know, the landscape out there today is that lots of marketeers are trying to generate new leads and opportunities for their sales teams to follow up. And we're all investing a lot of money in driving people to our website, so whether that's social media marketing, PPC, email marketing, you know, whatever the mechanism. But for many organizations, the, the clear call to action is to deliver traffic to the website. 
And for years, all of us have been using technologies like Google Analytics, which give us a really good insight into the visitors on our website. We can see what pages they're viewing. We can see how long they spent on the various pages. Um, but what we can't see is who those visitors are. Uh, and normally, the first time you learn who the individual visitor is, is when they convert through some kind of web form on your website and they provide you with their contact details. And for most organizations, so web conversion traffic rates of 2 3 4% are good conversion metrics. So you might have you know, hundreds of thousands of visitors visit your site, but you're typically only knowing who 2 or 3 or 4% of those visitors really are in terms of names, email addresses, contact details, and so forth. Um, so a lot of the marketing money we, we spend, a lot of the traffic we generate, you know, doesn't end up as potential leads or opportunities for your sales and marketing teams. And that's really what Web Insights is all about. It's trying to improve that mechanism, improve those conversion rates so we get more visitors in our funnel more quickly and we can convert more of those into real sales. So, so the way we do that? Just to give you some background, it is that we, we have a technology that, that we put on your website that sits alongside Google Analytics um, and really provides the next level of information. So we can, we can identify, firstly, organizations visiting your website, so which companies on your website. And then with a bit of integration with email marketing, we can actually tell you who the individual user is. Uh, and that allows us to track uh, when they're on the website, what pages they're seeing, whether the pages they're viewing are indicative of buying signals, i.e. are they looking at pro pages that would indicate that they are looking to buy some technology from us, or are they looking at our recruitment pages and our uh, contact us pages to find out how to visit the office. So we can use our technology not only to identify the individual visitors on the website, but also uh, score their visit to identify those users that are that are of more interest for the sales and marketing teams to follow up. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It seems like it's come a long way. Just a few years ago, I was a consultant, actually, uh, for a, a high-tech company out in Virginia. <coughs> as a sales and marketing manager, and uh, we, we had a service on board. We don't have to name who it is. And it was a great service. And I had to teach the salespeople to go in, look at the service, to see who had been visiting our site so they could see and make the connection. So if somebody from Boeing, we had a proposal into Boeing, and some all of a sudden there's all this activity on our website from people from Boeing coming in, uh, the more activity we saw, and uh, obviously the better it was, but the salesperson had to go into it. And I just had a hard time getting these sales guys to go to another product uh, to, to, to go look at this report to show that those Boeing people were coming in. They just yeah. kept forgetting to do it, and yet it was very insightful. Uh, and, and that's really the challenge, is because understanding who's on your website is of real interest to sales and marketing people, but, but what's even more interesting is when you combine that information with what you already know about them inside your CRM system. And so, let, let, me, let me give you an example. Um, if we see somebody on the website's um, and we generate a lead, then you know, what would typically happen in any sales organization is that lead would be followed up. Uh, and with some analysis, you're either going to qualify it into your sales process or qualify it out. So if you qualify it in uh, and they fit our profile of prospective customer, then we want to know when they're next on the website, what pages they're viewing. And we want that information to be seen in the context of CRM. So if they're at the end of the sales process you know, and they're looking up, uh, for example, uh, implementation content or they're looking up pricing content, and that's a good indication of where they are in their sales process and what kind of issues they're looking to address to move to the next stage. Conversely, if they're right at the beginning of the sales process and they're trying to understand you know, the value that we provide, the benefits, for example, of implementing CRM, then both from a sales and from a marketing perspective, we can deliver different sorts of content to that user. But also, we might just qualify them out, right? They may be, uh, they may be a competitor. They may be an organization that's never going to buy our technology. And what I don't want to do is every time they come back to the website in the future, put those back through the sales and marketing processes. So you know, what we're trying to do here is, is sort the wheat from the chaff and work out which are the right leads for the sales guys to follow up and provide the, the right level of information for them. Well, it's interesting because it's so fully integrated into your system and into the um, the grading system and presenting it to the sales rep that it's uh, it's just not this adjunct piece of information that comes in. It seems like it's 
fully integrated to help them make decisions. Now, how quickly does this information get into the website after someone visits the uh, get into the CRM system once someone visits the website? Yeah, it's, it's pretty much instantaneous. So within a couple of minutes, that that tracking data will be in, inside the CRM platform, and then once it's in, you can decide how best to use that. So for some of our clients, you know what they're doing is they're creating real time alerts for the sales guys to follow up. For others, it's more about providing that information on a regular basis, maybe once a day to the sales guys, because they don't necessarily want to get straight on the phone and say, we can see you're on the website right now. Let's talk to you about our pricing. You know, that, that can feel a little intrusive if you're on the other end of that, uh, that sales engagement as a potential prospect. But it does allow them to orientate the next phone call or the next email in the right way. So, you know, if they're looking at pricing, for example, they might want to provide some, some, uh, some an actual quote of the technology. They might want to introduce the concept of a call so we can organize a detailed pricing discussion and so on. So you know, most, of our, most of our customers are using it really in two phases in the sales process, right at the beginning for identifying new prospective opportunities they want to follow up on people that haven't yet converted through a form because you kind of expect if you fill a form out on a website these days that you're going to get a follow-up from a sales rep. Um, so that people are nervous about doing that. But using insights, we can obviously provide you with the details of those users or visitors before they fill in that form. And you can decide whether you want to follow up with those. That's the early stage of the sales process. But later on, when you're actively in the sales cycle, using that information to, to drive the sales agenda in the right way. And again, it's equally valuable there too. Really a competitive advantage. Oh, we're going to have to take a quick break here to hear from our uh, sponsors. When we come back, let's talk a little bit about who finds this the most interesting. interesting. I think sales definitely would. What about marketing? And how are the, uh, the, comp- how are the different departments using the data, uh, et cetera? Paul, uh, let's hear from our sponsors. <laughs> Whether you're producing a seminar series, user's conference, lunch and learn, or exhibiting at a trade show, Validar has a solution. From capturing leads at trade shows to managing on-site registration, tracking session attendance, gathering information, and providing sponsors lead retrieval, we have a full suite of solutions for you. Since 2005, Validar has been turning corporate events and trade shows into better business. Call 888-784-2929 or visit us at Validar.com. You know, ideally, CRM should extend beyond sales, marketing, and customer support to include order management and fulfillment, invoicing, and supplier management, which is why Workbooks delivers cloud-based CRM and business applications to a growing number of mid-market organizations, all at an affordable price, too. Those using Workbooks find that productivity is increased, operations are streamlined, insightful decisions are made. And the business is better equipped to differentiate against the competition and handle all the worlds can throw at you. Today, 1,400 customers in 50 countries trust workbooks to run their business. Why not join them? Be part of the group that's migrating to workbooks.com. And one last point to make that if you're tired of sales telling you the leads are no good, If you're sick of revenue shortfalls in your organization, if you're skeptical of promises made by smile and dial firms, oh, we've all seen those, Point Clear might be the way to clear up your confusion. Point Clear helps you generate, qualify, and nurture the quality leads sales reps will actually follow up on and use. Heck, they might even close some of them. To learn how you can deliver leads that are driven to revenue, visit pointclear.com. That's Point clear just like it sounds point clear dot com all right while you're checking all that out let's multitask and head back to the show with uh jim and his guest we've been speaking with john cheney ceo of workbooks about their web insights product which they uh, an enhancement they introduced to the marketing automation suite uh, oh a month or so ago and how it integrates with workbooks crm We've learned a lot in a few minutes. I really like that part about the uh, the alerts, John. At least the, the person. Um, if I've got a uh, if I've got a proposal in the Boeing, I sure would be nice to know uh, when people are there. I may not want to follow up, as you said, and spook them immediately, but I sure want to know when those Boeing people are sitting there on the uh, on the phone. So. Now, you've mentioned that this gets into the CRM system quickly. Mm -hmm. It grades. It helps you make some of those decisions right away. What are you going to do to follow up? But 
who finds the, obviously the salespeople find it most interesting, uh, but how does marketing then use this data? Yeah, and there's actually typically three sorts of users that, that find this data interesting. Clearly sales, uh, and as you point out, yeah, it could be that we've got an active prospect that we're looking to close and we want to know Boeing's on the website. But it could have been that we had a proposal with Boeing a year ago and we and they said no thanks at this stage, but they've come back now and it looks like their their budget's freed up or their project's back to life. And knowing that information is you know, equally valuable too for sales. For marketing and and often customer support find it useful because it's not only not only prospects we're tracking, we're tracking the existing customer base. Um, so if you can see from a support perspective that your customers, for example, aren't reading your content before they make the phone call for a support inquiry or log on to your case portal, then you, it may be that your case Sorry, your, your knowledge base content isn't good enough. So support find it re- really valuable for understanding which of their existing customers are actually using the f- support information that they provide on the website effectively. And then obviously marketing. You know, marketing are really data-led in most companies now. And so getting much better insight into which customers in the sales funnel are reading which bits of content enable them to build their lead nurturing and, and, and pipeline nurturing campaigns much more effectively. Because, you know, w- what you get from email marketing is you get visibility of who clicked through. But you don't then see where they went after that. Um, whereas if you can actually track the user journey on the website itself, then you can see they clicked through on the email content, read this page, but actually then went on to read about this case study or this, uh, this questionnaire, whatever it may be. So you get a much better feel for the user experience from the website perspective using the content that you know. So again, you know, lots of website technologies will allow you to do hotspots and track user journeys, but you don't know whether those people are customers, prospects, recruitment agents, or you know, potential competitors. Yeah. But by knowing that information that this really is a prospect going through this user journey, you can really refine your marketing strategy both from an email perspective, but also from a website design perspective. And that's well, it's, yeah, it's really neat to be able to see if somebody comes in and looks at the About Us page, the pricing page, or goes to the RFQs or goes to the, uh, the, the Contact Us page or goes to the Customer Service page to get their phone number. You really get an image of where, where people are, are going. One of the questions is, is the analytics, as I'm looking at my series of questions here. How, what kind of reports does marketing get out of this data? Do they get hard reports? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a, a couple of key aspects of that. Firstly, we, we score every visit. Um, so depending on which pages you will have seen, if those are indicative of buying pages, then you can you can uh, create a higher score for every visit. And then for an individual visitor, a person record, for example, in workbooks, then we track that score over a period of time. So marketing and sales will see, you know, what's the score of that today, that visitor today, what's their score been over the last week, what's their score been over the last month. And again, that gives you some picture of whether they are a short-term prospect that just popped on the website and maybe their score is only four or 500 today and we don't want to you don't want to spook them by picking up the phone, but actually they've been back on the website all over this week. Therefore, it feels like it's time to engage with them and follow up. All that, all that reporting information uh, is part of the Core Workbooks product. So we're taking the um, the analytics data off the website and adding it into the core CRM technology. And it means you can join that reporting data to your pipeline data, i.e., is this person that's scoring a 1,000 website points today active in my sales pipeline right now? Or were they active in my pipeline a year ago? Or have they never been in my pipeline? And we need to pick up the phone and do a bit more prospecting around those. So all that all that um, reporting is part of a core workbooks product now uh, and available for sales and marketing and the customer services team to use. There's a bunch of pre-baked reports that we provide and then clearly customers can tailor their own reports because you know, if you think about it, if you've got a database of prospects in your in your CRM platform of certain industry types, you might want to use those reports to route the leads to the right teams because you want all of the website visitors for the financial sector going to team one and all the website visitors for the IT sector going to team two because those are the teams that specialize in those verticals. Mm. You can do all that kind of stuff in the, in the CRM tool. How many of the CRM companies do you think are starting? I, I mean, some show this data, but... You, you seem to, you know, this is not a gratuitous question. You seem to really have this fully integrated compared to many of the other CRM companies we've interviewed. Are you unusual? 
Yeah, so I, I think our, I think our strategy is different than. I mean, we compete in a landscape dominated by Salesforce and Microsoft, and so you know, those are the guys that we're competing with all day, every day. Um, but what we're doing is building out a broad platform focused on the mid market. And one of the challenges, if you're a mid market customer, is you can't afford to invest the time to understand which web analytics solution is the right one, which email marketing solution is the right one, which telephony inter- solutions should I integrate into CRM. So the Wordbooks, our strategy is to build a broad platform that provides all that functionality, either out of the box or in a way that's very easy to integrate without having to spend lots of consultancy dollars. Now, if you're a large multinational, you can afford to go off and buy Salesforce, both from a license perspective, but also the cost of integrating you know, all this stuff around the edge to give you what we can deliver in workbooks pretty much out of the box. So I think, I think our strategy is different you know, in the sense that most CRM vendors are going down what I would describe as the best of breed route, where you, you take the best of breed technologies from each of the different areas and try and integrate them all together. I guess we would see ourselves as more best of need, so making sure that we can do a really good job uh, across the mid market and address the core needs of our customer base without having them without those guys having to worry about integrating lots of different technologies into into, into one overall solution. We do that for them. Well, best of need certainly <clears throat> excuse me, certainly explains it. You make the claim to shorten the pipeline time frame and conversion rate. Now we'd like to think that this kind of information does that, but why do you make that claim? What gives you the the uh, the, the knowledge that this is happening? I'm sure yeah, your customers are telling you that they are. And again, it's really in two po- two parts two parts of the funnel. So, at the early stage of the funnel, where they're not meaningfully engaged with us, then by using the web analytics and what we know in CRM, we can drive the right outbound marketing content. So, for example, if we've got a website visitor on the website that we know is in the IT sector, we can deliver in our next email marketing to that, that user, visitor, a case study on somebody else in the IT sector that's using workbooks, where our customers can do that same kind of content marketing to their, their user community. And that's actually pretty hard to do even in traditional marketing automation solutions like Marketo and others, because those, those systems don't have the data from CRM typically. So they're working standalone, whereas by sharing that data together, we can move more quickly through that early phase of the funnel by delivering the right kind of marketing content to those prospects as they're deciding themselves whether they're going to engage with with us or our customers mm. or the buying journey. And then the other end of the sales process, you know, once they're meaningfully engaged and we've got a sales rep in talking to them, then our customers can, can use the content on the website analytics to refine the conversations and close them down more quickly so again you know if they're looking at implementation content maybe they're concerned about how the implementation is going to go and and how much the cost of implementation is going to be and we can make sure the sales guys are addressing those objections more quickly in the sales process now, that makes are, most, sense? are most of your customers, are they in Europe, the UK, Europe, or are they worldwide? Uh, so we've got customers in 40 countries around the world. Mm-hmm. Um, it's fair to say that the lion's share of those are spread between the three big markets for us, which is the UK, US, and Australia, which all happen to be English-speaking. Um, but you know, we have customers you know, as far as China, Malaysia, France, Germany, all around the world. That's uh, that's that's interesting. Um, <laughs> that it's that it's the UK, the US, and Australia it makes to a certain amount of sense, certainly. But uh, still, when it comes to this system that you have, what is the typical size of the company? Is it ten salespeople, fifty salespeople, hundred salespeople that take on your products? Yeah, yeah, kind of five and up typically. Um, so yeah, our, our average customer will be buying between fifty and maybe five hundred licenses of our platform. So we're very much market focused. You know, the Web Insights solution itself you know, starts at hundred bucks a month. Uh, so it's actually pretty low cost as an entry level solution for those customers. You, you very quickly get hundred bucks a month of value from that by getting insight into you know, where your customers or prospects are going through the website. Um, and then uh, you know, as our customer base scales, then our larger customers are using more breadth of our technology. So they could be using our CRM tools, they could be using workbooks for order processing and invoicing, uh, using workbooks for the web analytics side of things, and as well as the, the marketing automation product that we've now got. So uh, it's a fairly broad church for us, but very focused in what I would describe as the mid-market. And some of these licenses now probably more prevalent in customer service too as as they begin to use 
a, a deep part of this. Yeah, and again, it's interesting. What we're seeing with some of our customers is that is they're taking the the technologies and techniques we've helped them implement in sales and marketing and applying some of those to customer services. So, for example, providing good quality email content to customers on how best to use their products, for example, uh, is helping the user, user experience. So that's reducing support calls because they're getting the content proactively rather than reactively. And again, by integrating that with the analytics side of things, um, our customers can build compelling support or customer engagement content delivered via email see which of that content actually meaningfully engages i.e brings those customers back to the website and and reading the content and from there where their user journey flows from that point forward so now as the market for these technologies matures we see them not just existing in the um the marketing and sales space but moving slowly across into the customer services space too a true customer relationship marketing program absolutely finally making the uh, making the connection <clears throat> thank you very much john for your time today we've uh, run up at the end of our time but i wish i had another 20 minutes to talk about this but uh we've had john cheney ceo of workbooks we've been talking about his web insights product and how much it actually delivers <clears throat> on the promise to short the time frame and the conversion rate we'll have this posted up for you next week uh john as a, as a podcast that you can use and uh take it to your customers out there thank you so much for your time now how does someone uh, reach you if they want to talk to you about this uh easiest way is via our website uh and uh, we'll track you on there as you come through uh so workbooks.com uh, and uh, have a look at our website and you can contact me directly from there and do you have pricing information on the website all completely transparent all on the website that's what i thought john cheney thank you very much for joining us from the uk today this is jim obermeyer and john cheney uh john cheney signing off paul over to you Once again, you've been listening to another episode of SLMA Radio, brought to you on behalf of the thousands and thousands of members of the Sales Lead Management Association. If it has to do with sales lead management and sales lead marketing, it probably starts here with the SLMA Radio Show. 